All right, we're going to go ahead and add this foundation wall here and the footing that goes below it, and we might add some of these guys too if we have time, uh, but that might be for the next video. So let's take a look at where those come from, how we know where those are in the set. So if I go to my top of slab here, it has an image of the slab, and you can see that 6 on S501 and WF1 are calling out those different items. So this section is going to show us that section. There's the wall and then there's the footing below named WF1. So if I go to the PDF, right, and we look at that section call out, which is 6 on 501, there is the 9 inch by 2 foot tall wall and there is the WF1, which we need to look on the schedule to see the size of that. You can also see that there's a one inch insulation on the inside of this to make a thermal break for the building. So if I go to the schedule and we look at WF1, it is two feet by 12 foot, 12 inches deep, two by two by 12 inches. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so let's get started. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and draw the foundation walls in um, using the grid lines. But first I'm gonna go to my visibility graphics and I'm gonna make the wall projection or the face of the um, walls a different color so I can see them a little better. So I'm gonna come in and make it a solid fill and I'll make it blue. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Now I need to make that nine inch wall so I'm going to go to wall and I'm going to go to the pull down and I'm just going to pick there's a uh, retaining uh, 12 or actually there's a foundation 12 inch concrete that I want to start from. I'm going to go to edit type, duplicate that and I'm just going to name it 9 inch concrete. Click OK. I'm going to edit the structure. I'm going to change the width of it to 9 inches. And on the interior side, I'm going to go ahead and insert that one inch rigid insulation, right? So I'll come and get that polyisocyanate, right, and click OK. Go ahead and use render appearance. I always like to do that. And click OK. So now I have the wall set up. And now I can go through and draw it. Now I want to set the base constraint at the bottom of beam. And I want to set the top constraint to the top of slab. And I want the base offset to be zero. So now I can go and check my location line. I want it to be on the finished face exterior. It could be core or finished face exterior, doesn't matter. Um, I'll do finished face exterior. And now I just need to draw around um, the edge. Use, and I can use the grids to snap to since we put the grids in. So I'll just start here and draw to the right to my grid. And you'll see that blue wall come in. And then this is 21 foot 6. I don't have a grid, but I can... Oh, I do have a grid. Look at that. And then this one, I don't really know how big it is. So I'll just say it's 3 foot 6 right now. And we can fix it later if we need to. And then I'll come down. Just stop this one here. There. Right. And I'm just following the... Um, the grid lines that I set up. And again, I may have to come in and adjust these once I get it in, but you know, right now I'm just gonna go through. And one thing that is nice about Revit is that if you do need to adjust something, you can. So let's see, how about five feet? Pull this guy up to there. there and then finish it off. So got the wall in. 
now I can go and check and adjust we'll come back and check and adjust where it's landing so if I go to my 3d view got a little wall in there we'll come back and adjust it and then put the foundation in